and welcome to our next edition of Cooking with Michael. This is our Halloween spectacular episode. It's date night, but it's also on Halloween, so very excited to, uh, to be here tonight. Uh, gonna have a great, great dinner. Again, I want to thank everyone who's been watching, uh, everyone who watched last week's episode. Um, we, did a, 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 we got a great uh, turnout for last week's episode, and a lot of people with a lot of uh, good, positive feedback. So thank you so much for all of you who uh, jumped in and said how uh, you know, gave us some of the feedback and said how much you enjoyed it. So hopefully you're uh, trying some of our recipes, and hopefully you are uh, enjoying the show as well. So tonight, nothing different. We're going to dry and make a great date night dinner. Uh, that has, you know, great taste, fairly quick, fairly easy, inexpensive, but a lot of fun to make. Tonight is Cornish Game Hen. Uh, we, if you watched the show last week, we did spend a minute or two talking about how people, you know, hear how things are. Uh, you know, they, they look at different foods and they look at the different menu items and, and whatnot, and they think there's a lot to it. There really isn't. Um, I'm hoping you're starting to see that. And tonight, again, is no different. Uh, where again, the Cornish game hen takes just a few minutes to prepare. The longest part of it really is the cooking. It will take about an hour and a half to cook the Cornish game hen um, on 375 in your oven. So go ahead and preheat the oven to 375. I've already done that for mine. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started. And I'm going to show you, you know, how to make the Cornish game hen. And again, our side is going to be very simple, just a regular tossed salad. Um, nothing, uh, nothing huge, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing... Uh, time-consuming just a quick uh, salad so um, and again of course I did uh, forget to do this last week earlier on so I'm gonna make sure I mention Andrew uh, my wine guy who has of course got me the Pinot Grigio um, for the evening so thank you again Andrew and of course uh, special thanks to my butcher who got me the fresh Cornish game hens um, they are uh, patted down and they're ready to be stuffed and seasoned and put in the oven so we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break when we come back, uh, I will show you what uh, what the first steps are. So sit back, enjoy, and thank you again for watching. Okay, we're back. Uh, I'm going to pull the Cornish game hen up. Um, I have them all padded dry. Uh, you can see I got two of them. Uh, Cornish game hens basically are tiny chickens, let's be honest. Um, so, uh, you know, they do come with, uh, you know, if you get them fresh, you can get them with and without the gizzards and the neck and whatnot. I got them fresh, there's no gizzards, there's no neck, there's no nothing in it. So that's already been removed. Uh, first thing you want to do is take the Cornish game hen like I have right here. You also want to make sure that you've patted it down um, nice and dry. So um, you also want, you want to rinse it and then pat it down pretty dry. Uh, so real simple. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of the butter, okay? Just a little bit of butter, melted butter. Again, we're still having some lighting issues. You're going to use your fingers and you are going to rub the Cornish game hen down. Uh, you're doing this for a couple reasons. One, of course, it does help give it a little bit of more uh, flavor and juice, uh, but you're also it's also going to help uh, brown the skin, which is really what we're trying to do, is get a nice little crispy skin. So you're just gonna go over the top with it. Um, I don't flip it over and do the bottom part. Um, you can, I just don't because I'm not gonna flip the bird over while it's uh, cooking in the oven so to me not a big deal so again once you get that nice and done I'm gonna put that aside for one of them then I'm gonna take stuffing uh, again full disclosure there's my stuffing I've already made it ahead of time and I'm gonna use box stuffing um, you can use stovetop you can use whatever brand as we all know I used Aldi brand so uh, let's put it back on the chicken there for a second. There we go. All right, so um, all you're going to do is just take the, the chicken. You're going to turn it around, okay? And you're going to take a spoon, and you are going to stuff the bird, okay? Just put the stuffing right into the bird, okay? Just like you would if you're stuffing a Thanksgiving turkey or anything else, okay? Now you want to make sure not to cross contaminate because again this is a um, this is a uh, 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 uncooked chicken so you want to basically make sure you're using a clean spoon in there and then when it gets to there you just use the other spoon or whatnot 
and I just pretty much cross-contaminated another spoon, so we'll have to get a third one, but that's okay. And all you're doing there is you are stuffing it until it's nice and done. You can see there it's fully stuffed, and then I'm going to take it, I'm going to put it back over here for a second, and I'm going to do my other one, okay? Real simple, real easy. Uh, I'm going to wipe off my hands, um, get another spoon, and I'm going to come over and I'm going to take the stuffing again out of the, uh, I keep doing that, I keep contaminating this. So take the stuffing and put it in there. Um, The reason why you don't want to cross-contaminate, of course, is because you are going to, um, the stuffing that you don't use to, to stuff the, the bird with, you're going to eat. Um, you're going to put it into a bowl, and that's going to be kind of extra stuffing on the side. I do like the wet stuffing inside because it does add a nice flavor to the bird. Uh, it also does, in fact, I've got to find a better way to do this, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, usually pretty much better at it than right now, but uh, just having a hard time making sure I'm not touching the bird. So, um, but again, it does give the bird a nice flavor and it also gives the stuffing a nice flavor as well. So I'm gonna take this, you can see that one's perfectly stuffed. I'm gonna put it on the plate over here. And again, you only need to have, you know, just two birds, one, one for each of you um, will do just fine. So I'm gonna pause this real quick and uh, give me just a second, we'll be right back. Okay, you can see I moved it out of the way um, already. What I'm going to do is just do a quick clean here um, because, again, you do are working with uh, fresh live chicken. Well, actually fresh dead chicken, but it's uncooked chicken. Um, what you're trying to do really is make sure you get all of the um, any potential germs or anything off the, the countertop. Okay, so again, uh, I have a special cleaner here, um, which is antiseptic as well as a cleaner. Um, and... Uh, that takes care of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Pyrex dish. Now again, we said last week, if we keep this up, maybe we can get uh, Pyrex as sponsors also. So Pyrex and Aldi, keep watching. All right, so we're going to push that down again. Uh, you can see the stuffing over here in the corner. Now I'm going to take the first one, the first bird, okay? And I'm going to put it right in the Pyrex dish, and I'm going to take the second bird, put that right in the Pyrex dish. Now, what I forgot to do with the second bird is I forgot to coat it with the butter, so I'm going to take a little bit of the butter, and I'm just going to rub the bird down. Um, I know a couple of you are going to be watching this and are going to be laughing about the comment of me saying rub the bird down, um, so I expect texts later on from, uh, from those of you who are now giggling at home like a five-year-old boy. You know who you are the one from New York. Um, anyway, so now that I got nice uh, on there, I'm gonna put this in the sink and I'm going to pause this to wash my hands real quick and come right back. Okay, um, before I do anything else, I'm gonna take a sip of my Pinot Grigio. Ah, love Pinot Grigio. Now, seasoning, real simple. Sea salt, okay, this one's McCormick, but again, got it Aldi. And I'm just going to grind the sea salt over top of both of the birds, okay? Uh, just enough to taste. Doesn't have to be a lot, doesn't have to be a little. Really enough to taste. I do, as you can see, a few grinds. Next I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my ground pepper as well. Same kind of thing to taste. And that butter is also gonna help the seasoning stay on and not kind of roll off during the cooking process. So again, we've got that. And last but not least, Onion powder, uh, again, another Aldi special. So uh, McCormick, local seasoning, um, but it's obviously known worldwide. So it's gonna just a little bit of onion powder, okay? And if you get too much, you just kind of move it around like that, okay? So I'm just gonna tap on a little uh, onion powder, a little, little bit here and there, just again to taste. As we always talk about, this is a symphony, not a solo. It is, in fact, uh, really designed to complement the taste of each other. So the onion powder will complement 
the taste of the salt and pepper. The salt and pepper will complement the taste of each other. The butter helps it all come together. And then, of course, just the chicken itself just does a great job. So what I'm going to do now, real simple, take my dish, and I'm going to stick it in the oven. This will take uh, an hour and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for one hour, 30 minutes. Now, um, let me move this back up here. Hi there. Okay. So again, it's an hour and a half. If you're doing a Cornish game hens, and they all come basically the same size, they're just a few pounds um, each. Um, if you're doing them unstuffed, you roll that back about 15 minutes. Uh, stuffed adds 15 minutes to the, the cooking time. Um, I think it's well worth the 15 minutes because again, it just adds a great taste uh, of stuffing, a great taste to the chicken, um, and a great addition to the whole flavor. So, um, but if you're gonna do it without that, not a problem. Just make sure you roll the time back uh, 15 minutes and your bird will be done. You know, you obviously the way to test it, there are a couple ways you can use the meat thermometer uh, and follow the FDA recommendations for cooking the chicken of how you know the temperature internally should be. I use the old fashioned method as I'm sure you've seen before. A lot of things I do are kind of the old fashioned method. Um, this I'm going to cut until there's no pink juices running from the chicken. Chicken, as we talk about pretty much in every episode, what foods can be cooked, uh, you know, a little bit rare or medium rare, and what foods must be cooked completely. As we talked about with the chicken, the last time we had chicken, um, we uh, it, it's got to be cooked fully. There's no pink in the middle. There's no pink juices running through. So make sure that when you are in fact doing this, that you are in fact uh, checking it. So in about an hour and a half, you want to do a slice on the thickest part of the breast and also a slice along the leg, where the leg and the, the body of the chicken meet. If both those are clear juices, then your chicken is done, okay? If they're not, put it in and you wanna do it about 10 minutes per checking, okay? So that's how you wanna do that. Um, so now, really what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this cook for the next hour and a half, and then we're gonna come back, I'm gonna show you what they look like when I put a little bit of stuffing on the plate, pull the stuffing out of the, uh, uh, the bird, put our salad on it, and really just have a great date night dinner um, with our loved one, our date night, our spouse, our Pinot Grigio, our Cornish game hen. Again, I hope you saw so far, and again, we're not done cooking it, but the prep time was only a few minutes. It took about 10 minutes of prep time. Um, the stuffing was cooked beforehand, um, but all I did was just rinse the, uh, the the game hens off before I put on the plate. Everything else I did right on the video. So you're looking at about 10 minute prep time uh, total uh, and then an hour and a half cooking time. So real simple. Everyone thinks that, you know, these big fancy meals with big fancy names um, like Cornish game hen are hard to cook. There's really not. Um, you know, we'll be doing Chateaubriand down the road. Again, it sounds like a big fancy, you know, steak, big fancy meat. Um, very easy to cook. We'll be doing shrimp creole down the road. Um, coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, maybe sooner, we'll be having a uh, on-location episode. Um, so we'll be doing some uh, foreign uh, foods um, from Bolivia and, uh, and just really having a grand old time doing this. So again, thanks everyone who's been watching. I hope you're enjoying it so far. We're going to go ahead. We're going to take our break. When we come back, um, we'll show you what the chicken looks like, the Cornish game hen looks like when it's all done. All right. Thank you so much, and sit tight. Okay, while we're waiting for the Cornish game hen to finish cooking, um, I decided to have a little bit of fun with our, our with our Halloween spooktacular. What I did was I made uh, Rice Krispie treats, bloody Rice Krispie treats. So what I did was basically just Rice Krispie treats with some red food coloring. Looks like uh, some ground up human in there, uh, something like that. But I also did something. Uh, this is actually a great idea. My wife came up with this idea. Um, what we did was we put them, we made them into zombie brains. Okay, so now we have zombie brains. Okay, so I'm going to do, I made these for the boys. I'm going to bring the boys in here, have them take a look, have them take a taste, and see what they think. So, hey boys, come on in. Okay. I'm going to adjust the camera down a little bit. Okay, so hold on a second. Hold on, hold on a second. All right. <laughs> All right. Tell, what's your names? I'm Alex. I'm Josh. Okay. I'm Alex. 
So Josh is my uh, seven-year-old, Alex is my five-year-old. Alex, I'm going to move you up here. And you can see Phoebe trying to get in her way there, too. So, so what do you think? They look like brains, huh? I want this brain. You want that brain? <laughs> All right, go ahead and pull that brain. <laughs> you want that brain? I'm taking a piece. Just taking a piece? Tell me what you think. Does it taste like brains? Yep. Alex, does it taste like brains? No. <laughs> is it scary looking? Brains, say no. Yeah. Is it? It is scary looking this time. Is it fun looking? Alex, come back into the shot. But, but, Daddy, um, this time, I'm going to take the whole thing. You're going to take the whole thing? All right, take oh. the whole thing. All right, Phoebe, you can't have any of this. All right, so Halloween Spectacular. Looks like it was a success. We made Zombie Brain Rice crispy Treat, so that's awesome. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, yeah, boys, thank you very much, boys. I hope you enjoy it. Go eat your zombie brains. Uh, say bye. You're not playing. All right, bye. Bye. Say bye, Alex. Bye. Bye. All right. Um, so bye. what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pause, and then uh, we'll come back, and uh, we'll finish up the Cornish game hen, and we'll go from there. So thanks so much. Sit tight. Okay. Um, we're not done yet. we got about uh, 25 minutes still left to go. Um, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to – show you kind of what it's looking like as we're about an hour into it. So I'm going to step out of the frame here a second. I'm going to grab pot holders. I'm going to pull the, the Cornish game hens out just to show you how they're coming along. So hold on one second while I do that. So you can see they can look They're They're nice and brown. Um, they're coming along just fine. Let me put it back in here because I have to be honest with you, it's actually heavy and hot. So let me put that back in there. All right. And there we go. We're back. Okay. So it's coming along nicely. Um, again, we won't actually cut it till the full hour and a half. Again, remember I said uh, earlier on, you want to make sure that the juices run clear from the thickest part of the breast as well as where the drumstick bone meets the or the leg bone whatever you want to call it meets the body of the the cornish game hen if both those are uh clear juices and you don't obviously see any pink meat which you shouldn't if the juices are clear um then it's ready to go uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll stop it and then we're going to come back here in a little bit and uh, at that point i'll pull it out we'll cut it we'll see what it looks like and uh then we'll go from there so um i hope you're enjoying it and sit back Okay, we've got about a little less than a minute to go before the chicken has gone through its full hour and a half cooking. We're going to take it out. I'm going to show the camera down onto the Cornish game hen. And we're going to cut it and see if it, uh, if it leaks uh, clear or if it leaks pink. If it leaks pink, again, about 10 more minutes before each check. If it leaks clear, we're good to go. Again, you want to check on the breast, uh, thickest part of the breast, as well as the... Uh, where the drumstick leg bone meets the body of the Cornish game hen. Those two places clear, we're good to go. After that, all we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of uh, side house salad, um, and we're going to put some other stuffing on the plate, and then we're done. Uh, one of the things I'm not going to show you is, can we do this at the table? Hey, look, it's, uh, the timer's done. I'm turn the timer off a second. Um, what we're going to do is... Uh, what you do is when you take it off, you put it on the plate with the wet stuffing inside the bird and let, you know, your date night and you uh, take it out from there um, That uh, as opposed to pulling it out and putting it on a plate next to it. So we're not going to show you pulling it out, but really to get it out, you just use a spoon or a fork or whatnot and just pull it straight out. So I'm going to step away from the camera a second, leave us rolling, and I'm going to pull out the, uh, the, the game hens and the Pyrex dish and take a look at it. Hold on one second. So... I go in here, and I'm leaving the oven on just in case it's not uh, done. So I'm going to put it on the counter here, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this down. As you can see, a nice brown, crispy uh, skin, which is nice. And again, I'm going to cut just right here on the bone. No pink. I cut right here into the breast. And no pink there either. So if you look, it looks really good. If you're totally unsure, you can also go to the other leg here as well. Um, we'll look at the other one just to be good. Again, no pink juices. 
and we'll cut uh, along the breast as well here and it looks perfect so we are actually done i'll move this back up here hi all right so that's it that's how you cook corn cornish game hen real easy real simple stuffed it took about an hour and a half to cook uh, about 10 maybe 12 minutes to prep a great great date night dinner seems like a long time for a date night dinner but keep in mind during the time that we're prepping it my wife my date night is uh upstairs putting the kids to bed and you know reading them stories and doing all that stuff so if you plan accordingly it doesn't it's not that big a deal time wise and then you still have enough time to be able to spend a lot of time drinking your pinot grigio and talking to your date night and really getting to reconnect which is what we wanted this to all be about sorry i had to get that swallowing before i did that um and again, what it's all about, and it's really about just, uh, you know, catching up after a very, very busy week. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed our Halloween Spooktacular. Um, it wasn't real spooky, but uh, I hope you liked the idea of the Brains uh, Rice Krispie Squares as well. I hope you enjoy the, the Cornish Game Hen, and I really look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Thank you again so much for watching. Have a great night. Enjoy it. And I'll see you next week on Cooking with Michael. Good night, everyone.